symphonic landmarks born of difficult times and a delightful Rossini overture are the focus of this CSO program led by Riccardo Muti. Sergei Prokofiev composed his fifth symphony during the pivotal summer of 1944. The war was raging, but it was shifting in favor of Russia and the Allies, and Prokofiev felt the urge to write a rousing, triumphant score, or as he described it, a glorification of the human spirit and freedom. The composer had been sheltered from the war's hardships while staying at Ivanova, an artist's retreat 150 miles northeast of Moscow. He emerged in January 1945 to conduct the symphony's premiere at the Moscow Conservatory. Just as he lifted his baton, artillery fire could be heard in the distance. It was the sound of Russians celebrating the news that the Soviet armies were finally pushing the Nazis back into Germany. The symphony proceeded with a blend of martial violence and gentle lyricism, nervous energy and rousing confidence. Days after the work's U.S. premiere, Prokofiev's picture graced the cover of Time magazine. Rossini composed Il Viaggio a Reims, or The Voyage to Reims, in 1825 for the coronation of France's King Charles X. The plot is a contemporary farce about a group of international travelers who are on their way to attend the coronation in Reims. But for whatever reason, the opera lacked an overture. The piece on this program was a 20th century creation, assembled from a set of dances from another Rossini opera, Le Siege de Corinth, The Siege of Corinth. It has since become one of Rossini's most recorded works. Mozart's Symphony No. 39 dates from the summer of 1788, three years before his death. It was the first of three towering symphonies that he produced in the span of about two months, and what months they were. Mozart was struggling financially, and he begged for a loan from his friend, a Viennese merchant named Michael Puckberg. Just imagine my situation, he wrote. Sick and full of worry and grief, I am forced to sell my quartets for a trifle just to get some cash into my hands and meet my immediate obligations. It appears that Mozart had planned to introduce the symphony in a concert series at Vienna's Spiegelgasse Casino, but there's no record of any premiere. And the symphony offers no clear evidence of Mozart's troubled existence, from the buoyant allegro to the third movement that evokes a relaxed Austrian Lendler, or country dance, to the finale, which is full of clever, mischievous touches. Thank you. 